Hour 2 of Accra's largest mosques are set to be filling up quickly as many families decide to defer the funerals of their deceased relatives until they are permitted to give them a befitting farewell. This has largely been as a result of restrictions in movement of persons and limits on large gatherings as part of government's efforts to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Morg managers say they may soon be unable to take any more dead bodies and are urging their clients to take advantage of the provision made for private burials to find final resting places for their deceased. Join us is Henry Kwesi, but who visited the Kolebu and Pantan Morgs and has more in the following report. At the Kolebu Teaching Hospital Mortuary, we meet Ni Amawolo. His late brother passed away last month and his body is still in the morgue. He had come to the morgue to make sure his brother's body is kept well. Just like many families, Mr. Wolo refuses to carry out a private burial and will rather wait until the restrictions on movement and public gatherings is lifted. He plans to organize a big funeral to honor his late brother. Oh, he died 12 February, 12 February. And we've postponed this funeral because of the COVID-19. But actually we are just planning because we can't bury this man or this guy with these 25 people, or what they call it, four people. They said restrictions have been given from government. Four people should come and take their from now. We can't do that. Especially we, the guns, we have a lot of customary rights we do when somebody died. But how long will Ni Ama wait before buying his late brother? What is his position? Uh, it's a pastor. It's a, it's a big pastor in Ghana. Yeah. So Ghana, yeah. A, big a big funeral for him. Because a lot of pastors will be coming, a lot of churches will be coming, and everybody has to be there. We have to testify, you know, something must be done. We can't bury him and then later. But when he's buried, I don't think anybody will come to the funeral because all of them are afraid of this COVID-19, the virus. So I don't think we can host any of these things. So we are just waiting. The story is not different at the Pantan Hospital. Thomas Iwuku has been working at the morgue for 27 years. He tells me there's never been a time that the morgue has been so full to capacity. Well, almost uh, first Nana, every week in the bodies, Namoko. And I said, Yare by an anti, Grofobi, and to me, Baba for body. First Nana, Yare by an anamo, we are with so Mufano Baku Baku. But almost a lockdown, a bemono. Thomas Euku says they now have no choice but to refuse storage of bodies. First, no, it me a G semina or a capacity of the machine a one or two. And it is said in the SSI, I am a cry, I am a first name, Yema, but this is in home of a body. Staff of the two mugs are now worried about their health due to the state of congestion. Deputy Administrator at the Panther Hospital, Collins Kesi, is appealing to families to bury them privately and organize funerals later. We will be very glad if people come for their bodies, simply because uh, apart from the revenue that we will get, it will also free us a uh, free space for uh, bodies to be received over there. You know, people will continue to die. And if uh, preservation facilities are choked, why will these bodies be kept? So it is our collective interest that um, private barriers are undertaken so that uh, the mortuary uh, facility in the country will have adequate space to accept more. But as it stands now, until the restrictions are lifted, bodies will pile up and generate a health crisis. Henry, Quincy Bedu's report for Joy News. Now joining me via Skype is Dr. Peace Mamle Tete, senior lecturer in the Department of Sociology, University of Ghana. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us. I'm sure you can appreciate why families are deferring their burials for now, but I want you to take us through 
exactly the reasons why people decide that I'd rather hold on to my funeral for now. Thank you very much for having me. Here. Good evening to your listeners. Well, you can understand that it's not an, we are not in normal times, and you can understand why people are not in a hurry to bury their dead. All of this is embedded within our culture, and of, despite COVID-19, we still are Ghanaians and Africans. So basically, when you argue that or suggest that people should bury their dead or give a private burial, you are suggesting that this must be done by the family. But in our cultural context, our family is not nuclear. You are talking of an extended family that is way larger than 25 people. And so if you are talking, and these are family members that you also have obtained through marriage. So in many traditional areas during funerals, you find that in-laws have to perform certain rites to honor the dead. So when you talk of a private burial, who are these members who would constitute the 25? If you talk of our various families, if, even just from one side, you would have more than 100 people. So that's one of the major considerations. And the rights that need to be performed, you need some elders to sit in, say some Ebusia Penin. The Ebusia Penins usually don't live in the urban areas with us. So you have an Ebusia Penin in your village somewhere who in these times perhaps cannot journey to the city to sit in and get this private burial done. So some of these are some of the challenges. In any case, it's also suggested that people need closure. You do funerals so you can obtain closure. And there are people whose relatives are outside the country, or even when they are in Ghana, they are in the regions. And once they don't see the body, psychologically, they do not get closure to feel that the person has really departed and is not here. But typically speaking in sociological terms, our worldview is that the world is made up of the living, the dead, and the yet to be born. And so when the dead people die, we go through all these rites of passage. Of course, let's start from birth. When a person is born, we welcome the person in a glamorous way. In the same way, when the person dies, we have to give the person a befitting burial. In our culture, funerals are sometimes not done for children, or when the person dies, what we call a bad death, or what I can say, a tofu, or when the person, or maybe through accident or maternal mortality, some of in some areas, funerals are not organized. But when the person has died of natural causes, and the person has lived well, you don't bury the person with, excuse my language, like a chicken, like, like we say in Akan, in Siena, da koko. You have to give the person a befitting burial. Yeah. And funerals are also Dr. Dr. Tete, you raised some very valid so arguments, especially yeah. because of our societal context. Yes, but yes. we are not yes. in normal so times, as the president has said a number of times. So I missed that. How please. do we go about it? Well, at this point, we. I'm saying you raised difficult. some very valid thing, arguments. The way to go is especially to because of people. our societal context about why. We can't just bury the people that way. But I'm saying we're not in normal times. How do we go about it? It's the, there isn't an easy way out. And I think that the only way we can get people to agree to go this way is to engage them. Maybe let people see what's happening in the mocks like you are rightly doing. Let people appreciate that the times are changing. And of course, we say that culture is dynamic. We can't say that this is how we've always done it. Of course, we understand why people want to wait. But culture is dynamic. And as the times change, we should be open to changing with the times. And the only way we can achieve this is when we engage people and let them appreciate the times we are in. Because the question is, if COVID is going to go on for the next year, we all don't know. Are we going to keep our dead in the morgue for a year? Of course, we know in situations where people have kept bodies for far longer. But as the congestion increase, there's likelihood that these bodies may not be well preserved. And so it's about education, engagement, and getting people to appreciate the exigencies of the time. Dr. Tete, if people are unwilling to compromise, would you or do you foresee a situation where government could come in and say, for instance, we're forcing uh, mass burials? I would not subscribe to mass burial. 
perhaps what I would say is that families should be told that if you, you sh we should give people timelines. So if you have your body, if you've had your body in there for more than say two months or three months, we could start getting people to take their bodies out for as long as the bodies have been in there. But mass burial would really uh, not go down with a lot of people. It, of course, as we talk about these things, let's put ourselves in the shoes of that if it were me, would I want my mom to be buried in that situation or want any relative of mine? So in as much as we are preferring these solutions, we must also put ourselves in the shoes and see that if it were mine, situation would I have wanted it that way. So it's about, like I've said, engaging people and saying that, okay, if your relative has been in there from last year, we have to get out all bodies that have been in there from last year. And so facing it out gradually, but after we have engaged the families to get them to understand.